Hello everyone, my name is Joe Squarson, channel's called Ethernet Link, and in today's video we're going to be trading order flow on a universe of futures in Quant Connect, right? Fun stuff. Um, the videos I tend to do best on my channel are videos about order flow trading or about options pricing, and I've done a lot of option pricing, so let's get back into order flow. So um, we're going to be using Quant Connect and Python today, and um, I already have the code written, but I'm going to go through and explain it all. <clears throat> and I'm also going to post it in a Quant Connect discussion. Um, yeah, so let's let's just jump right into it because I, I got all the code here. Let me. There we go. So yeah, we need some imports, and we're going to get to that later. And there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on in this in this code that I think that you guys are really uh, really gonna okay really gonna enjoy. Because we're going to be using a universe of futures, not just a single one. So how do you do that? How do you get indicators on that? How do you keep track of your positions on that? That's what we're going to talk about. Because a lot of the code that Quant Connect has for these built-in strategies that they have, like the ones over here, they're great, they're cool, but they operate on a rebalancing idea, not necessarily risk you know what i mean and i would in my mind i'd rather enter a position knowing i'm either going to make or lose this much regardless of how much time passes so that's the approach i'm taking with this it's all in one file and yeah let's get into it so first thing that we're going to do in our initialize is we are going to define our universe right i just have the nasdaq s p russell and down here you could use whatever you want but those are our tickers. So also, we also need a list for all the futures. We need a dictionary for our indicators, and then we're going to get into that later on. So yeah, so for ticker and tickers, we're just going to pretty much add it to our list, right? With no extended market hours, because we're order, for order flow trading. We want to be trading during the most liquid hours of the market. Okay, so cool. So now we have all of these things to keep track of what we need to and we have all of our futures in our algorithm awesome right so how do we then get indicators on it because order flow works in a weird way so let me bring up paint because everybody loves paint so if the black line is the price right and so the price is going up Let's say that there's a bid and balance here. We, well, we want to buy that bid and balance, right? And then just write it up there, right? That's pretty intuitive. Same thing if there's an ask and balance, we would want to write it to the downside. However, if price is going down and there's a bid and balance, we want to short that. So it's inversed is what I'm trying to get at here. That's the whole point of that shebang. So how do we... How do we keep track of that? Well, we need to make an object class of all of our indicators. This is someone in Quant Connect, I believe his name is Alex, actually showed me this because I was trying to just make one. I was trying to make a, a dictionary for everything instead of just putting all my indicators in one dictionary. I tried to make a bunch of different dictionaries for everything. And I was like, what, what an idiot, this is so much easier the way that he showed me to just make one thing and have everything in there right so we have simple moving average and we have an entropy indicator what's that well I want to get the entropy and measure the measure of randomness for all of my futures so that way we know we can define the stock going down as it's below the moving average with high entropy and the stock going up as it's above the moving average with low entropy okay cool so when we make a new indicator, custom indicator, we need an init function. And this is all fixed, right? I just fixed it like this because you can see there's no params in there. If you wanted to pass things in, you could do it like that and then put it into a self. So like, right? And then you could just throw that in there. Um, potato potato 
however you want to do it. I just prefer to do it like this because I'm just hard coding numbers in there. I'm not thinking about this part of it too much, more so the whole structure of everything. But regardless, we have, there's two things that you always need. In, there's three things that you always need in a custom indicator. You need an init function, initialize. You need an update function, four things. <laughs> you need an initialize, update function, values, more than four things, and you need an is ready. Right? So we went over our initialize. We have our period, our moving average period, or our entropy, because that's how we're going to be defining if it's high or low, just above or below moving average. We have our entropy value, our moving average value, and then queues for all of them. Right? So now in our update, we get an input value, it needs to be a float. If it's not a float, we destroy everything and kill our program. If it is a float, we apply uh, append it to our queue. And if our queue is long enough, right, we have 10 things in there, then we get our entropy. So we just use the SciPy, we get entropy of all of our probabilities. The probability of a price showing up in our queue is what this is because How do I explain this quickly? So let's say I have a list, All right? Let's, let's get paid back out here. Let's say I have a list of one, two, I like that too. One, two, one, one, three, All right? That's my list. So the probability of a one showing up from this list it's three over five. The probability of reaching into it and randomly put, picking out a one is three over five. A two is one over five, and a three is one over five. Whoops. <laughs> so when I want to calculate the entropy of my list, I don't calculate the entropy of my of this. I'll calculate the entropy of of three over uh, of this. This is what I calculate the entropy on. All right. That makes sense because we want to know how random is the distribution of numbers in our sample, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're getting how many times everything is showing up and then dividing it by all of the things showing up. You know what I mean? So that's our probability of the thing showing up in our list of us reaching into it and randomly grabbing it. We take the entropy of that using base two because Shannon entropy, base two, cool. <laughs> and then we set that to be our value. Now, up here, we append to our moving average queue this value, whoops. That is because when we are actually ready, which is the length of the moving average queue is the moving average period, then we get the moving average which is the same exact thing, right? We just, not the same exact thing, but we just get the sum of the Q and divide over the period. I'm doing this so that way we're always using, always working with the NumPy array. Um, because when this Q, like this deck Q, whatever you want to call it, you can't do NumPy stuff with it. You have to convert it into at least just a list. I just go an extra step and convert it into a NumPy array because why not? But, um, I'm sure that all the C++ devs are like freaking out over that. But then again, in C++, you would just use a vector for everything. So, or a map or a vector, whatever. So you wouldn't even have this problem. All right, so stop yelling at me. Okay, so there we go. So that's what our ends is as a entropy indicator. And then our update just calls the update functions for both of them. So now when we're in our on data and we're going through every future in our futures and our tickers, we need to get the current contract, the front one, right? Because it's like options. We need to go through the chain pretty much and just get the, um, there's no strike prices. So we need to go by expiration. Just get the closest one. So that's what we're doing here with future.mapped. If it's not already in our indicators, well, we got to put it in there because it's a fixed universe. I'm not worried about anything entering and leaving. That's why we don't have an on securities changed. We just need to put our symbol in our indicators dictionary, right? So that way, dictionary's key value, we can set we can set an indicator value to our symbol. So that's what we're doing there. I actually don't even need to put this continue here, I don't think, but whatever. Um, 
we're just getting the close for that current contract, updating all of our indicators with that close. If we're not ready, we're going to manually warm everything up. So we're going to do a history request. And then just for every trade bar that we get in the history request, we're going to put it in there. This is kind of like, it's like we, it's like our indicator is empty. I, I want a hundred things in our moving average. If I only have one, I need to get 99 more. That's what this code is doing up here. It's going through and saying, Hey, get me a hundred plus one to just make sure that we get it get that we get everything. We're already selecting a hundred select uh, requesting a hundred requesting a hundred one isn't the end of the world. And we're saying, take all those prices and update it with that. Okay. So if we're not invested in our, in our current contract, the one that we're looking at right now, let's see if there's a trade, right? So let's go through and let's get the bid ask the bid size and the ask size. So this gets the most recent version of it. They change this all the time. At one point it was this one point. It was an average. I don't know, man. I think that for quote bars, it's still an average, but we're actually just using the security. So this is the most recent size. Take the delta. We're doing it by bid minus ask, right? So a positive delta means an imbalance of bids. So now we're actually defining what it means to have a, an imbalance, right? So if our bid is greater than our ask times three, that's a significant imbalance for us to take a trade. And if our delta is just positive, right? And then the same thing, or the opposite, the exact inverse for our ask. Next, we're getting the values for our moving average, our entropy, and our entropy moving average. And we're checking, are we trending? Are we in an uptrend? So our close is above the moving average. And our entropy value is below the entropy moving average. If it's so, then on bid imbalances, we want to buy. And on ask imbalances, we want to sell. So here we have our tags here. And then in the opposite, it's the opposite, right? Now, take a look here when we have fill prices for our current contract is the contract's close. This is so that way we can keep track of all of our orders. I tried to use the um, self.add self risk management, but it wouldn't work. And I was like, I'm, I wanted to just record this video and work on other stuff, play guitar. So I'm just going to do it like this, just do it manually. And so then if we're not invested, that means we are invested. If we're long, check if we're in profit. Check if we hit our profit level, liquidate the contract, set our fill price to none because we're not in anything. Same thing for a stop loss and then for a short position, we want it to go down. So then just inverse it. And there you go. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in this and there's a lot of intuitive stuff. And so now if you were to run that, you would get this result right here. Um, I set the back test value to just be ridiculous because we have five futures or four futures in here. So just to make sure we wouldn't get like any uh, not sufficient funds, you know what I mean? Just because we're testing. And yeah, you get this result right here. We can see how it's working, right? We can be long and short two different futures at the same time, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want. And we take 900 to 14 trades year to date. Our average win is just over our average loss and we're winning way more. So, and also for the risk in that I'm using 1%. So if you even want to make this an even higher frequency trading algorithm, you could set it to be half a percent for each. And then if we run that, we'll watch this together. While I talk about some stuff, what I want to talk about with you guys, because I'm just trying to put out stuff. I think that you guys will like, I think it's doing that weird thing. No, okay, whatever. It'll come. But I'm trying to think about what stuff, what kind of stuff you guys would like. Um, everything does relatively fine uh, to the rest of my channel, given enough time pass. What is going on here? Um, but I, I noticed that the order flow video I already had and the option pricing videos tend to just do the best. So that's the stuff I'm going to try to put out more and more for you guys. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure why <laughs> that's not running. Uh, 
I've never even like received the test. So let's let's just try one more time. And if it doesn't go, it doesn't go. But um, yeah, I'm always down to make whatever kind of strategies you guys suggest. You guys request in the comments. In the last video, a guy asked me to use OpenVB and a few other things to do like financial data analysis in like VS Code and like file systems like that. I always tend to gravitate away from things like that just because I have no idea why this isn't receiving the back test. But um, I always tend to gravitate away from stuff like that. I'd rather just go directly to my API. A lot of the stuff like that, you have to input API keys and it's kind of just like a channel. So that way you could request it through OpenBB instead of through each individual API. I can't imagine you need that many APIs to the point where that gets um, like too intensive, you know what I mean, to call all your APIs. If you really are using the terminal, then I could totally get it. Okay, I don't know why this isn't going through, but whatever. We can see our results right here for the actual one with this. So the code for this will be in the Quant Connect discussion forum. I'm going to put that in the description. Um, I encourage you guys to check that out. Um, I have a business. We make trading indicators. They're all, I make them and we sell a few of them. This one is for free. This volatility EMA, our new volatility stop is also free. You guys could pick this one up right now. If you wanted to, you could go to the, and go into the description, go into our trading view account and pick that up. Um, in the future, we're going to be coming out with price action stuff. So that'll be fun. If you're down to pay for an alert, we have these sick reversal alerts. They've been doing killer, right? Call on tops. Perfect. Look at how good it could be sometimes, right? And even that the ones I'm scrolling past pretty fast, <laughs> they're even not terrible. This goes from, this goes to price to price. If you like to trade with price action, and you don't mind paying, we got you with that as well. These get auto generated for you every day at 10 a.m. If you like ribbons, we got you too. Double, take, uh, two take profits twice in the same day. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed making this. Oh, now we get all this stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed making this order flow future trading algorithm with me. Uh, links to everything will be, will be in the description. Please check out Prometheus Analytics. That's the trading view indicators. Check out this Quant Connect discussion. Make this stuff your own. Make cool projects. Do fun stuff. And yeah, leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed this. I will catch you guys in the next one.